For today's beginner's guide for Ultimate Alliance 3, we have our second Curse of the Vampire character. It will, of course, be Blade. Now, following on from that, we'll have Punisher and Morbius. They shouldn't take too long because all the editing's done for them. After that, we'll then have the much-requested Crystal. I'm getting so many comments about her. And then after that, will be Electra, and then I'll start to do polls again. But for tonight's video, as mentioned, we'll be looking at Blade. So, in the video, to let you know how he plays and if he's worth investing some time into, we'll start off by looking at a quick overview on his stats, we'll then check out his abilities, next up is the team bonuses, we then look at his synergy attacks, so that's the characters he synergizes well with and characters you want to avoid, and then we have the build options available and the best dice weight to place on him, up next it's his alternative costume and it really does look pretty nice, and then we'll finish up with a quick summary, so let's jump in and start off with the overview. Blade's a bit like Moon Knight, who I recently covered in. He is a hybrid character, but the majority of his kit is based around the melee side of things with just one range skill thrown in there. When you look at his light and heavy attacks, they're both melee based. His extreme attack is a ranged one, so you need to make sure the enemy is about half a screen or so in front of you before you actually cast that to make the most of it. When we look at his abilities tag-wise anyway, three of them have the piercing tag and one of them has the projectile tag, but there's something that's missing here. So when we look at his special traits, he's using weapons. So that would indicate that you would be able to use the uh, elemental isos to put fire or ice or shock on them. And you can actually do that, even though it's not shown here. So that's just a tooltip error. So when it comes to building them, that will be very important. But you can equip elemental isos on them, which is absolutely amazing. It doesn't have regen, and that's not a tooltip error. I've tested it. It most definitely does not have it. And that's a little bit disappointing and it seems a bit of an odd omission for Blade. Saying that, however, when we do look at his stats, his stats are very good. And I don't know if the omission of the regen is because his stats do so good. If you check them out anyway, his strength is B, so that works really nice for all of his abilities. Vitality is a B, so that's great. Mastery is a C. Resilience is a C. Durability is a B, so again, that's great for his survivability. And then finally, his energy is a C. So, decent start there, especially with the fact he's got that elemental tag, even though it isn't shown there on this particular screen. So, let's now have a, a more in-depth look at his abilities. Before we actually break down this specific ability, I will mention with Blade, all of his abilities can be charged three times, and you'll notice the difference in the glow around them as they're actually charged up. You can see the final charge there, and when you do charge it, your area effect goes up, your damage goes up, and the skill looks a whole lot better as well. From testing it and doing various different runs against mobs and bosses, it seems that... In some occasions, it actually slows you down a little bit charging, so I do find that to get the most optimal amount of damage, the majority of the time you're actually just going to be spamming the abilities rather than charging them up. So play around with it yourself and see what you, you actually find works best for you, but personally I did prefer just to spam the majority of them. But the first one we have anyway is Spinning Swords. This is the one I use the least. It does work great against bosses like Surtur and so on your larger bosses because he jumps up but once you start to unlock your other skills you won't be using this one as much. The next ability Blade has his trusty shotgun and stake throw so this one is called high stakes once again of course it is a skill you can actually charge and you'll fire out a lot more stakes there. Now doing testing with this and a fair amount of testing against Sandman when he was stunned either charging it or not charging it and by far I was doing a lot more damage almost two times as much damage when I was actually just spamming the button rather than charging it up so this is the one I generally will use when a boss is stunned if I'm playing blade so if you're going to use use it then just actually spam the button don't hold it down to charge at all this next ability is pretty great for taking out trash this has his trusty glaive you've seen it all from the movies where he throws it and it ricochets round the enemies the longer you hold it down the more enemies it will actually ricochet past and i find that when you just tap it it really doesn't do much at all it almost just goes in a straight line but if you fully charge it it can go all the way around the enemies and it looks absolutely amazing so just from a stylish and looking cool point of view if you charge this one up and you're in a multiplayer game and a load of minions run in you'll take them out and you'll look like an absolute boss while doing it as well. 
The final ability we have here for Blade is off the chain. So this one reminds me of the Whiplash build in, in Marvel Heroes. That really was an awesome build, that one. So with this move, you can actually move while you're charging, of course, like the other skills, but you can't move while you're actually casting it. It will make you stationary, and it has a little bit of a downside because sometimes if an enemy moves out the range and you're just standing there for a second or two spinning it around, not actually doing anything. I really do wish you could move about whilst casting it as well. It's another trash clearing skill so when it comes to taking out trash you'll generally use bleeding edge or off the chain when it comes to taking down your regular bosses you use high stakes and then for your larger bosses like Surtur or Mamu then you'll use the spinning swords there so that is all of his abilities. Now just before we move on I'll mention once more that it does appear that to be the, the most efficient with them you actually have to just tap the skills rather than charge them up this isn't really a game that you have to worry too much about efficiency because once you start to level your characters and the alliance enhancement system none of the content is really that difficult so I would say if you want to look like an absolute boss then charge the skills but if you're trying to min max your characters and do levels in as quick a time as possible then you want to just spam them instead but both the options are there for you so next section let's have a look at the team bonuses Team bonus wise then Blade actually has so many I struggled to fit this in and I had to change the format a little bit if I would normally do this section you can see team bonuses is at the top right normally it's in the top left but I just didn't have space for it now if you look at all the teams he's part of it's anti-heroes, midnight suns, marble knights, gods and demons, avengers, back in black, martial artists, cutting edge and finally sharpshooters as well so you can see for that reason there's quite a lot of threes and fours there which means there's a lot of overlapping teams which means you can get a nice amount of team bonuses from them so if we look at the highest up ones I'm not going to run through all of them but you can see under the the four section we've got Electra, we've got Punisher and we've got Ghost Rider as well there you've got quite a few that are fall under three and can make a nice supernatural theme team so you could have the likes of Elsa Bloodstone with them you can have Moon Knight as well and a character we see pop up very often as Wolverine he's in there as well so yeah quite a lot of team bonuses available here so there's a lot to actually digest so once again you can take a screenshot of this and refer back to it when you're actually playing the game if you need to but that's all the team bonuses let's have a look at the synergies now Out of the four characters released with the Curse of the Vampire pack, then Blade is actually the one that does the best in regards to the total number of synergies available. So if you want to play one of those characters from that pack and looking to do a synergy trial or a gauntlet trial where you need to get a set amount of synergy damage, then Blade can certainly be a very good character for that. But if you look at the synergy traits, he's got Launch, Bash and also Area Assault. In regards to the top five characters that he synergizes well with, we've got Star Lord, Crystal, Four, Storm, and also Ghost Rider as well. And those characters can add elements to his swords, so that can work out really nice in that regard. Synergy attacks and potentially flaming swords. What an awesome combo. The bottom five characters you want to avoid if you're looking to do a synergy trial are Nightcrawler, Spider Man, Rocket, and Groot. And then finally, we generally always have these two at the bottom it's Thanos and Scarlet Witch once again there. So that's all the synergies, let's now have a look at the build options that are available. When it comes to build options for Blade, the first thing I would put on him is a, an ability attribute that adds an element such as shock, fire or ice because as mentioned earlier on in the video, although it doesn't show as a special trait, he can certainly do that. and blade running around with fiery swords looks really amazing so you'll start off with that personally i would use the shock one now from testing it turns out that the only attacks that will actually be affected by that element would be the light and heavy and spinning swords that's only one of the abilities so for that reason you don't want to spec into elemental damage what would you would go for if you're avoiding the ranged attack which i wouldn't really recommend but if you're avoiding it you would go for increased piercing damage by 19.2 percent that will then affect the three abilities and his light and heavy attack alternatively if you're using the ranged attack as well then you want to go for increased damage by 16.5 or increased strength by 13.7 and due to the fact that uh, his kit is really built around charging up his abilities you want increased resistance while attacking by a ton as well. So that's the build option, let's now look at the alternative costume.
With this alternative costume then that's unlocked through the gauntlet, Blade becomes an altogether different creature of the night really here. The, the white and the gold, all you need is his swords to be replaced with canes and that really would complete the set there. But nice looking costume but he most definitely does look like a pimp when he is wearing it. In regards to future costumes, I would like to see the one you can see on screen here, the one where he's got all the tattoos in his head and he's, he's not got his jacket or anything like that. This one would really look pretty awesome I reckon. But that's his alternative costume and again just as mentioned you unlock this via the gauntlet mode so just keep playing through that and you will eventually get that. So let's now just finish up with a quick summary. So for this final summary section I've actually spent a good 10-15 minutes trying to record this and every time I stop it because I'm not happy with the summary I'm actually providing for Blade. And the reason for that is I'm so invested in the character I'm finding it really hard to, to decide either way if I, if I really like him or if I feel a little bit disappointed because there are some awesome aspects. I love when you change through his actual screen when you're checking out his stats and so on and he does the move from the end of Blade. That's absolutely incredible. A lot of his moves do look really good but it's a fact you need to charge them up in order to get them looking really good and that slows his playstyle way down and from the testing I've done it looks to bring down his overall efficiency as well. So exceptionally hard character to rate and one that I'm still going to have to put more time in but hopefully this video has been a little bit on the longer side so hopefully with everything we have covered if you've not played Blade yet this will give you an idea if you think you will like his particular place down then you can start to invest in him but with this particular one definitely let me know in the comments below what you think of Blade just for the fact that I'm definitely still undecided on him so let me know do you love him do you hate him do you agree with some of the criticisms I have about the charging of skills and it's slowing him down and also if you enjoyed the video take the time to hit the like button and the share button and next up we have let's see it will be Punisher after that it will be Morbius who is actually a ton of fun and can do so much damage and then as I mentioned earlier on it will be Crystal and then Electra as well so as always thanks for tuning in for this and I'll see you all again soon